Hello Raging Blast to community. I have noticed there are still a handful of warriors striving to get stronger and trying to reach the top. Some have been wanting training or just an understanding on what to do to keep progressing. Me and other top players love to help and see you all grow. Sadly we just do not have the time to train others like we used to or you may be busy when we are finally available. I also understand that there may be new fighters wanting to come in and they need a hand to help get their power up. So here is an official pro tutorial that you can learn at your own pace with the help of some familiar faces. And here I have your first teacher coming in. Hey. Can you show our guest here the basics and guide him towards the top? Yes. I'll see what I can do. Come, warrior. I'll see you later. Good luck with training. Now it's just me and you. Come into my office. Let's see what we can do with you. Great. I'm a master at the basics. Starting of with a real basic. Follow-ups. Understand all follow-ups with your main characters to learn how to do combos. Not much else to say here. Just go to training mode and learn this. Next is guard break. What this move does is break through your opponent's locking defense. All you have to do is time your smashes the same time it takes to do a snap attack. It has the same timings for all smashes except 2 and 3. Here's a quick demonstration of how that looks for every smash as well how it normally looks. When it breaks through you can see the gut punch Womp Gohan in the belly and when it doesn't work you see him just block it. Goku is showing a bit of everything as an example. Good job Bako. Keep it up. Bing. Bong. Bonj. Boingo. So that was nice. Now take a look at Smash 2. There are three versions of different timings. Here's the fast and long one. And finally, the perfect timing. Bonk. Now let us go over unblockable moves. There are smashes that are not blockable once you start the combo. All smash 2s and 3s and certain smash 4s as well are not blockable, which I will demonstrate a few. I will be showing this with the main characters. Once starting the combo, we will see if it can be stopped. As you can see, for Gohan Smash 4, the only way to stop it is by vanishing. Now, let's take a look what happens when you decide to hesitate a bit. Would you look at that? This is why it is important to know this. You may have doubted in the past without even realizing it. Go to training mode and see what other smashes are not blackable. But also understand that some of these smashes are not banishable either when starting the combo. Here's a quick showcase of the main ones to look out for, but do keep looking into them. Now the next thing that ties in with this is your basic block. These are most definitely blockable when attacked head-on. For this, it is really simple. If you see a move that is not unblockable, then just block rather than evade. You'd be surprised just how many moves can be stopped by simply blocking. Sometimes we are so focused on the advanced moves that we forget the basics. This can tie in with a saying that your opponents mess up. Let's take a look at that. 
specifically Sal, since he stands out the most. You see, basically all his smashes are easily stopped by a simple block. Some fighters may panic and try to evade only to fall into Sal's grip when it can be avoided very easily. Let's take a look what happens in a real battle when this happens. Bloop bloop bop. You will get punished. Don't assume it's only Sal. There are still a few others, but that is for you to check out in training mode. That's about it for my area of expertise. It looks like you got the basics down. Let's see who's next to see you. Oh! Well, howdy. Hello there. Guess I will be next to enlighten you warriors with some knowledge. Let's go over some defensive techniques. Swaying has its moments to help in close combat. Once you start to sway, you can use it to either escape or to immediately start attacking back. Let's take a look. As you can see, the little rascals here are able to counter-attack immediate punches. In case you missed it, I slowed it down for some of you slow pokes to get a better look at it. It's good for fast reactors. Make sure to practice it because you can definitely mess up in battle and just get walloped on. For this next one, it's somewhat basic. Nothing complicated to understand. It's super rising. So if you can just make sure to super rise immediately at will, you should be fine. This is a great way to get out of bad situations. It gives you a strong defense, so it makes it hard to stop you if you can pull it off in an instant. When you mess up, it'll just make you twitch a bit awkwardly, but when it works, oh boy, does it work. Definitely a strong arsenal to have. A lot of pros use this so much that it's a natural instinct at this point. They use it for both defense and speed. Tricky to control sometimes, but it increases you once you get it going. Now that that's over with, here's a big source of power to get a hold of. A very strong move if you figure out how to time it. Guess what it is? Key Blasts. They're really powerful if you know how to time them. Understand that Key Blast can be used for both offense and defense. The best way to explain this is by just showing moments when they've been really handy in battle. They're good stun tools. As you can see, when timed correctly, you can stun and slowly move in towards the target until you start attacking. Beautiful! But just like everything else, you need practice. If not, then you can mess up and the opponent will escape. There's still more into this, but I'll explain a bit more on it later. This was just to help you understand the basis of it. Hard work goes a long way. It looks like that's it for now. I'll explain some key blast moves later. Let me enjoy myself. I'll let Mr. Big Grip Man over there take over for a while. Why hello there, children. I'm glad we've all been very helpful recently. Let us continue forward. I want to show some offense. But before that, when it comes to offense or combos, you should know these few moves. Starting off with Cell Signature. You might have seen this move done before, but never understood how it works. Here is how it's done step by step. Cell is slowing it down to show the steps. It's punching, then mid-combo doing your signature, then immediately block and start attacking again. This might be a lot but here's a way to train it, and how it should look. The CPU is set to defend. You see Cell going at it. He's training his signature. When training, try to make it look as fluent as possible where it continuously connects a scene. Once you get it, you should be able to do it in battle. The next move is the triple kick for Gohan and Cell. And I'm talking specifically about having it connect, where the opponent should not be able to do anything to escape it. 
If it doesn't connect, then you may have a lot of these kinds of moments. Anyways, the next move to most definitely have is called the block cancel. Everyone needs and should have it. To give a quick explanation, just block behind the opponent at just the right time when tossed. So you catch them then the combo resets so you can inflict damage again. Finally the last combo move to have is the charged key blast cancel. For this I'll be letting the expert Dave show this one. Thank you for showing that Dave couldn't have done it better. That's all on just knowing what moves to have in order to be able to do combos. Don't think one is more important than the other. All of them are equally important, remember that. Now that we have that out of the way, we'll be going over combos. There is not one single combo you should learn specifically. There are many combos to be made, short or long. I'll be showing this with some of the main characters. I understand there may be current fighters trying to increase, and new fighters as well that might not have a strong base combo to go off by. To help, I will be showing base combos to start off. With them you can adjust the combos into your style and branch off into more. Also, I will be showing a more advanced version as well, to get an idea how much you can change it up. Now let us grow. These combos are using the basis of what should be added within a combo. Don't think that's everything you can do. You can still add on to every combo and even take away less hits if that's what's needed in the moment. Don't forget your opponents can still vanish out of your combo. That was fun. Now let's see what happens when we start to expand and change up the combo. You can really change it up, which you should, once you pick up your experience. Switching it up will help you. What I hope you all are seeing, is that everything done, connects with one another. When doing combos, make sure it connects and everything should start to fall into place. Remember, there is never a required order. Connect your moves and you can make great combos like anyone else. That's about everything I have for combos. If you ever want more, feel free to watch pro fights and mimic what you think fits your style. Well actually, before I forget, there is another important aspect when it comes to combos. And that is time mix-ups. What this is, is changing timings within your combos. You control all your smash timings, from immediately hitting, to delaying the smash, to confuse your opponents from being able to vanish. This can depend if you can lock up your opponents or take away their vanishing confidence. When fighting, you may notice your opponent continuously vanishing your combo. When that happens, see if you can slow down your moves to counter their vanishing. Try to balance slow and fast combos. Randomize your timings to where your opponents cannot predict them. Well, that's everything I have for you all. I hope this was enough to push you all forward. Good luck warriors in your remaining training. Thank you Mr. Grip Headers. Now, where was I? Alright. I was going to explain something about Key Blast information. But first things first, let me explain what's needed. 
When fighting strong opponents, there are certain things to look out for. Some of those things, I like to call the three areas of bubbles when fighting. You should understand this before learning how to approach, which I will explain after this. This hopefully is easy to understand. Now, hurry and follow me into the lab, you little weasel son of a gun. Well, let's see. Take a good look. What you're looking at is what I call the first bubble. You will be barely able to move, only sidestep, and also able to punch your opponent, just to get the idea of the range here. The second bubble is when you are far enough to the point where you cannot hit each other physically, but you are still within a snap attack range, which is a fast paced area still, on what you decide to do to catch one another. Keep in mind this is the main area focused in battle. The third bubble is where you cannot snap attack, yet still a very crucial bubble nonetheless. In this range you are mobile, flying around and figuring out how to approach your opponent. A tricky area to work with but infinite options in your next move. The purpose of knowing all this is so you can measure yourself versus your opponent to see where your best chances are in approaching. You must test and see if your raw power is stronger. If your raw power is higher, then stay in place and do not let go, which means stay in the first bubble. The same applies to the other bubbles. See where you do your best, and slowly chip away at your opponent for best results. Now that you understand bubble areas, we can now focus on approaching techniques. This basically means how you go about in catching your opponents. There are many ways in approaching. I will be showing you the main ways that pros do it, but don't assume these are the only ways. Let's start with the easiest, a flying kick. What you have to do is unexpectedly surprise them when they least expect it. Go ahead and rush them. But when you fly in, make sure you are flying to the side rather than straight on. It increases your defense to be stopped. Doing this will increase your chances of hitting them, plus it increases your defense when they try to stop you. Here's how both look. Another important note to take is the length of time it takes or even when you let go and the hit goes through. Check out different times when it did work in battle. Pay attention what each hit has. Good. They follow as said. Maybe there's more you see that I didn't. Nonetheless see what makes it work. Now let's look at what happens when you hold for too long or go straight forward at them. As you can see, it's not looking so good. Doofus attempts. Oh boy do they stink. Anyways, all this was around the third bubble, when the approach has already started, which I hope you're noticing. Moving on, a lot of pros use this next one. It's catching you within the second bubble, by snap attacking when they get the chance. Not much to explain here. I think it's self-explanatory. Snap attacks is fast to be used immediately to catch your opponent, so focus on it in fast-paced fights. I'll explain this one, doctor. Did my cat just talk? Yes. Alright, carry on. A popular move is with the key blast. How this works is if the opponent isn't moving much. You can throw a barrage of them to paralyze your opponent from getting away, and start attacking once close to them. You really need to focus on this because a lot of strong fighters do this naturally nowadays. Still is a must in learning. This can be used in almost any bubble. Key blasts are strong for and close range. Thank you, Cat. I'll explain this next one now. You can relax on my shoulder. Anyway, what Cat explained was good because this next one really ties in nicely the strongest approach to have been used. It's called the pattern. It's so simple yet so effective versus pros and many other players. 
The previous number one stopped many for years. It's not a hard move, but when you are unaware of it, boy does it increase his chances of catching you and neutralizing you without even realizing it. A strong style that lets you start in the third bubble. The pattern is you flying in, throwing a fed charge key blast. Stopping right away and throwing one single key blast, then flying again soon after and repeating the process until you are close enough to use any of things I've showed. When done this in the past, it put a massive pressure on a lot of fighters due to we couldn't understand why we struggled to move so much when that monster was approaching us. Well, that's everything I have for y'all. I hope it helps. Hope you little mofos get stronger. Glad to see you all stronger. I might have missed out on a couple things but for now I think this should do it. Depending how all goes I may make a second part. For now enjoy. Thank you all for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful to old and new fighters out there. The top players are still around. If you want to join our discord, leave a comment to your username and we will add you. Until next time. I'm out.